Today we're going to be finishing the Black Epoxy Coffee Table build. I feel pretty confident to say that I redeem myself from the mistakes that I made all in part one. I'll go ahead and put the link on the screen, but be free to judge me uh, if you disagree. If you didn't catch part one, let me go ahead and hit you with a 15 second recap. Got this lab, removed the bark, cut it to size, flattened it, removed more bark, added a shellac to attempt to prevent staining, built a mold, mixed the epoxy, poured it, overheated the epoxy, added some fans to save the day, removed it from the mold, flattened it, sanding time, cut it to size, back to sanding, router time, filled some holes, added the finish, wiped it off and realized mistakes were made, tried again, and hated the finish even more. All right, we're all caught up now. I'm Joseph with Five Duck Studio. Just wanna thank everyone who subscribed to our channel and is watching our videos. Let's get started. All right, to fix the mistakes of my past, I felt the need to remove about 1 16th of material from the top of the slab, which quickly turned into a lot of dirty work. I really wanted to try and remove all of the staining from the black dye that I used when I originally poured the epoxy, and it worked, I mean, mostly. I like the saying, I'm too poor to buy cheap. Unfortunately, I don't always remember the things I swear I was never going to forget. And with that said, I bought a cheap router bit when starting this whole flattening slab process, and it clearly is no longer sharp. It left me with a lot of burn marks on the slab, which required hours and hours of sanding. When I was removing some of the material, I made a few mistakes. No way! I know, surprising. One being this nick here at the side of the table, and also I mispositioned the sled and it fell off the guide rails at one point, making me have to take off closer to one eighth inch of material from the top of the table. Uh, one thing I didn't add in the recap was I already added the inserts to attach the table base. When I was removing that extra material, it did start to make me wonder how deep did I drill the holes for the leg inserts? Thankfully with this build, I did not expose any holes when drilling the inserts, but the nick that I made did cause me to go ahead and set the roundover depth for the roundover bit deeper than I originally wanted but in the end, I think it came out pretty well. Whenever you're flattening or sanding epoxy, you always have the potential of exposing more air bubbles on the surface of the table. Well, you know, in my case, there is no such thing as potentially. Nothing some tabletop epoxy wouldn't fix. I will be the first to admit, I went extremely overboard on this, trying to fix any mistakes and prevent any further mistakes from happening. Now to deal with stabilizing this spalted maple, we decided to use liquid glass deep pour epoxy to help stabilize the wood. This is a three day cure epoxy and is a very non viscous liquid, meaning it is not thick and flows easily. Yes, I definitely did and Google that. I spent the next 12 hours adding coats of epoxy as needed to try and quench the thirst of this wood. I can tell you right now, my wife loves it when I say wood is thirsty. Before we continue, if you're enjoying this content, can I just please ask that you go ahead and subscribe if you're not already, and go ahead and give a like to this video, please, if you don't mind. Uh, we would very much appreciate that. Now, after a three day break, I now have to will myself to go back to work. And by work, I mean sanding. So much sanding. We will fast forward past that and move right into tons of micro bubbles left in the epoxy. No doubt, Next time, I am going to apply epoxy to the edges of the slab as a seal coat to help eliminate all these small air bubbles I had to work with. The hours I spent trying to look and find tiny little holes is exactly what I wanted to do that day. To me, filling bubbles is the worst part of an epoxy table build. It's the thing I want to skip and rush through the most, so that's how I know I hate it. I might even go as far to say I loathe it entirely. But unfortunately, you can't skip it unless you really want to cry later when you're applying the finish. And because I really must love sanding, but more importantly because I'm paranoid that even after the epoxy, I was going to have some soft areas of wood, I added a thin coat of CA glue to make myself spend more time sanding. But more importantly, ensuring that I wouldn't have to refinish this table for a fourth time. Now that I am done with all those enjoyable steps, I get to do more sanding. And I'll go ahead and work myself all the way up to 240 grit while water popping the surface between grits. The day has come. I will get to see if all the extra things I did, needed or not needed, or complete waste of my time by being completely overcautious, have paid off. We use Rubio Monocoat as the finish again, 
but this time we went with Pure, which is their clear coat. I've used Osmo's hard wax in the past, and I really like that product too, but the Rubio Plus Activator with its seven day cure time is the main reason you'll see me use Rubio on mostly all my projects. And if I feel the need for patience, I can always not add the activator and wait three weeks for the finish to cure. We decided that we were gonna do a second coat of Rubio. I went ahead and hit the surface with a maroon pad to even out the sheen across the table and to also help even out any sanding patterns that I left in the black epoxy. It's truly amazing how better the second coat looks, especially in the epoxy areas. The maroon pad step really helps to fix any sanding patterns that I didn't like in the epoxy. We have finally reached the finish line. The moment is here, the moment that some people probably skipped right to. The table is finally finished. Looking at this table versus the previous finish we applied, you will definitely see, in my opinion, why we refinished this whole table. You now see so much more of the wood's character and all the funky black lines left by the fungus, Trust the fungus. from the spalting process. I would really like to hear what people think about these legs with this table. I think it looks pretty cool together, but I'm interested in hearing from y'all. I purchased these legs from Flowy Line Design if you're interested in them. It has truly been a long road to get to this point, but the lessons I learned along the way were extremely annoying, but also quite priceless. And it will go a long way to help me be the best woodworker person that does stuff with wood in a boxy, I don't know, that doesn't sound right, maker? I have no idea what my title is, but I know one thing for sure. What? Ah!